I'm Christelle from Diabetes Strong, and this video is all about alcohol and diabetes, specifically how alcohol impacts blood sugars. Balancing diabetes and alcohol can be tricky. We don't all get impacted the same way by alcohol, and some types of alcohol will also impact us differently. And then when you throw diabetes into the mix, things can become a little tricky, a little complicated, and even potentially dangerous. And especially people who manage their blood sugars with insulin or other diabetes medications that lower blood sugars need to be careful when consuming alcohol. So let's talk about it. The reason diabetes and alcohol is such a complicated combination is that your body essentially views alcohol as a poison that your liver needs to process immediately. So when you enjoy alcohol, your body will start processing that poison, getting it out of the body, thereby stopping any processing and digestion of any food you might have eaten. If you had injected insulin for a meal prior to drinking or during drinking, you're now at heightened risk of a low blood sugar. As remember, the body has stopped digesting foods, it's not being released into the bloodstream, and you're at heightened risk of a low blood sugar even for hours after you're done drinking. The risk is highest for those who manage their blood sugars using insulin. If you live with type 2 diabetes and you manage with metformin, it's a bit of a different scenario. Metformin reduces the amount of glucose released from the liver into the bloodstream. It doesn't increase insulin production. So if you manage with that type of drug, it's more unlikely that you'll see a low blood sugar due to alcohol. Many type of alcoholic drinks also include a lot of sugar, and that of course can drive blood sugars upwards. Especially mixed drinks or drinks that uses juice or soda can have a significant impact on blood sugars. If you manage your blood sugars with insulin, it can be a little tricky trying to figure out how to dose for any carbohydrates that might be in your alcoholic drink while still anticipating that your blood sugars might drop later on. But all of this doesn't mean that you can't enjoy responsibly an alcoholic beverage. But it's really important that you understand how alcohol might impact your blood sugars and what you can do about it. Let's talk about the different types of alcoholic drinks so that we know what we're dealing with. The color of your drink won't help you determine how many carbs are in that drink. Rather, it comes down to the level of fermentation, as fermentation turns sugar into alcohol. This is a carb count for a few common drinks. So as you can see here, wine hardly has any carbs, and I personally find that I don't need to dose insulin to wine. Moscato and dessert wines are a different case though. However, if you then choose sweet liquor or beer, the carb count starts hitting a little harder. I enjoy beer. I personally always have to dose insulin if I drink one. If you're into hard liquor and like it on the rocks, you'll be happy to hear that vodka on the rocks, tequila, gin, whiskey, all of those on the rocks have zero carbohydrates. However, if you add a mixer, juice, or soda to your booze, you can find that the carbs quickly add up and there can be up to 30 grams of carbohydrates in eight ounces. Binge drinking is not recommended for anyone with or without diabetes. And due to the unpredictability of how alcohol can impact blood sugars and insulin needs, ending up in a situation where you black out or where you vomit can be really dangerous. And if you have a low blood sugar during that time, it can be fatal. So for the rest of this video, I'll only be focusing on insulin-dependent diabetes and alcohol as this is a high-risk combination. If you find yourself in a situation where you're throwing up due to excessive alcohol consumption, it's important that you tell the friends that you're with to help you measure your blood sugars and potentially call 911 if you find that you can't hold down juice or food. What I find really scary is that when alcohol is involved, it's not guaranteed that glucagon will raise blood sugar levels up to a healthy level. Per a study in Endocrinology Advisor, they show that an injection of emergency glucagon is not as effective when there's alcohol in the system. At the end of the day, no one expects you to stay completely away from alcohol just because you've been diagnosed with diabetes. Unless you have another health condition that calls for cutting out alcohol completely, there's no reason why you can't enjoy a glass of alcohol now and then. So let's go over eight quick tips on how to safely enjoy alcohol when you live with diabetes. If this is your first drink as a person living with diabetes, start with one drink only. Make sure to have someone around you, a friend, don't drink alone, and keep a close eye on your blood sugars, either by finger sticks or looking at your continuous glucose monitor if you have one of those. Another tip that I like is to start out with a lower carb drink. So for example, a dry red wine, a white wine, or a low carb beer. 
And the suggestion is don't take any insulin with that, but have a meal with it and dose your insulin for that meal. Next, take notes. So take notes about how your body reacts, how your blood sugars are fluctuating so that you have a reference for next time that you're gonna go out for a drink. Sounds like a fun little experiment. When you enjoy alcohol, make sure to keep an eye on your blood sugars, both while you're drinking alcohol as well as after. Remember, it takes about an hour and a half for the body to process one drink. It means that if you have more than one drink, it's gonna take longer. And the fifth tip is to inform the people that you're with that you live with diabetes, also what they should be on the lookout for and what to do if you end up drinking too much. Consider choosing alcohols that are lower in carbohydrates. Not having to add a lot of insulin to the equation could potentially make it a little easier. Take notes. Take notes on how different types of alcohol impact you and how different amounts of alcohol impact you and learn from your experience. Consider enjoying a meal with your drinks or add a snack after you're done drinking. That can help reduce the risk of having a low blood sugar overnight. And finally, and this is not so much a guideline, it's more just my suggestion, be smart about it. Reduce or don't do binge drinking. Keep your drink limits to maybe two to three drinks. If you do want to drink more, have a firm cutoff. It might be five drinks. You know your body best. But be smart about it. Let's not end up in dangerous situations. Thank you for watching this overview of diabetes and alcohol. If you have any tips for me or for the other viewers, please leave me a comment down below this video. And if you like this video, please also give it a like. If you enjoy my content, if you'd like to see more from me, remember to subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications. That is that little bell, that way you'll be informed whenever I post new content. Thank you so much for watching.